So I'm in the process of rearranging my personal workspace, and that includes getting a new tabletop, installing new shelving units, and so on. But most importantly, I wanted to upgrade my existing personal workstation PC that's sitting right over here that consists of an 8700K and an RTX 2080 Ti. Now, don't get me wrong, the GPU is great. It's the fastest that's available in the market right now but the CPU and the platform deserve an upgrade. But I wanted to challenge myself. Basically, I wanted to cram as much as power as I can into a small form factor chassis without sacrificing on performance, uh, thermals, and acoustics. So why don't we get started right after this? The Sound Blaster X3 is the USB DAC I've been waiting for that brings a fantastic audio experience to your desk with a clean mic input and powerful headphone amplifier. It connects via Type-C and brings a new Super X5 sound profile that beautifully recreates multi-channel speaker setup for movies at an affordable price. All right, so this idea was inspired by AMD's recent launch of the Ryzen 9 3950X. This CPU exceeded our expectations in terms of its raw CPU performance. It even puts Intel's highest 10 Core i9 10980XC, which costs way more than this processor, to shame. With 16 cores and 32 threads, this is the fastest AIM4 CPU that's available to date, provided you can actually find one because literally this thing is out of stock everywhere. By the way, if you're interested in our full performance review of the 3950X, you can check it out right over here. Now housing the 3950X is the ASUS ROG Strix X570i Gaming ITX motherboard. That's right guys, I'm going ITX this time and this board offers everything I need for a perfect workstation PC in a compact form factor. First of all, I love the design of this motherboard. Everything from the matte black PCB to the conveniently placed power connectors should make cable management easier. The heatsink placement is well thought out as it covers both the VRMs and the chipset, plus it's actively cooled by two fans. There are two M.2 PCI Gen 4 slots, one of which is directly placed above the chipset heatsink and another one behind the motherboard. It also has Wi-Fi 6 support and the I.O. is loaded with four USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports and another four USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports and memory speeds can be overclocked up to 4,800 MHz. Seriously, this motherboard screams rainbows, sunshine, lollipop, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's crazy to see so many features packed into a compact uh, motherboard. Now, speaking of memory, I went with Corsair's Dominator Platinum 32 gigabyte kit clocked at 3,600 MHz. This kit looks gorgeous, and I love the matte black finish as it gives a really cool stealthy vibe. And on top of that, Corsair's Capellix RGB LEDs look fantastic. Now to cool the 3950X, I went with NZXT's Kraken X62 280mm AIO cooler. You don't necessarily need a 280mm solution to cool this processor because when we ran our benchmarks, it ran perfectly fine with an air cooler. Uh, but since I am going ITX, uh, AIO seems to be the better option and the case seems to fit that cooler just fine. For storage, we're embracing AMD's PCI Gen 4 capabilities with X570, and so I decided to go with the Sabrin 1TB Rocket NVMe drive. The name Rocket certainly fits this drive as it's insanely fast, claiming read speeds up to 5GB per second and writes up to 4.4GB per second. Yep, <sighs> what a great time to be alive. Now check this out, Sabrin actually includes this drive with a heatsink, and it looks ridiculous. It features an aluminum heat sink with copper heat coils and a top heat spreader. This thing is legit, guys, but unfortunately, I won't be able to use it in my PC because uh, it's just too big uh, to fit inside the motherboard. Plus, the motherboard does come with a heat sink uh, on top of the chipset, so it should get the job just fine. In fact, I think I might just end up using that heat sink as a display showcase in one of the shelving units that I plan on installing uh, in my office. So, yeah. Uh, it'll be cool. I've also added an extra terabyte SSD from Hynix. This will be my secondary drive for games and for my footage archiving. The GP of choice is none other than the ROG Strix RTX 2080 Ti OC. I chose this card for a few reasons. One, it's matte black and I love the aggressive look of this GPU. Secondly, it runs a lot cooler compared to the Founders Edition and given that I'm cramming this inside an ITX case, means thermals had to be under control and this certainly delivers. It's got a triple fan layout and ASUS has implemented Axial Tech fans that shifts more air into the heatsink while maintaining lower noise levels. It's also a 2.7 slot card which should fit the case that I'm using for this build and it's also got ASUS R support which means I can sync the colors with the motherboard with just one piece of software. Now to power the entire build, I chose Corsair's SF750 small form factor power supply. 
There should be plenty enough to power the 3950X and the RTX 2080 Ti, as well as run efficiently since it's 80 plus platinum certified. And on top of that, uh, it's fully modular. Now, one of my favorite features of this PSU is that Corsair includes premium individually sleeved cables that should make cable management a breeze. And now on to the case of choice. And this one was definitely an interesting one because uh, cramming all of this power inside a small form factor chassis isn't easy and I had to spend a lot of time looking for the ideal solution. Uh, and so I decided to go with this, the Sliger SM750. It's roughly a 14 liter mini ITX chassis that's entirely made out of galvanized steel and then powder coated in black and I love the design of this thing. It's minimalistic and it doesn't scream gamery on the outside, although the components going on the inside are eye-watery. I'm sacrificing a little bit on the front I.O. coming from the Define R6, as it only has one USB 3.1 Type-A and one Type-C port. This case does support radiators up to 280mm at the top, so I shouldn't have any issues mounting the Kraken X62, and the side panels are windowed, and they attach to the case via pegs. So now that you're aware of all the components that's going inside my ITX system, let's put it together. So the system booted and it's running just fine, but it took me a while to get there, guys. You see, I learned a few things from this whole building process. One, I learned patience because building an ITX rig requires a lot of patience and that's something that I learned. Secondly, I wish I planned it a little bit earlier as in planning the whole process a little bit earlier before approaching the building process because I ended up uninstalling a lot of the hardware and then reinstalling it back uh, just to make sure that the cables routed appropriately. Things like your power supply cables, uh, fan cables, all of those things required uh, a lot of trial and error, but it ended up working out just fine. I used zip ties to secure the power supply cables to the chassis to make sure that they don't make any contact with the fan frames because I don't want them being caught by the fan blades because uh, I'm using two 140 millimeter Be Quiet silent wing fans as intake and then the two uh, radiator fans as exhaust for the CPU. I'm pretty happy with the airflow configuration because it's drawing cool air from the bottom and then exhausting the hot air uh, to the top. One of the things that surprised me the most was the clearance between the PCI riser card and the fan attached to the radiator because it's so close, but it all worked out just fine. Uh, the fan blades didn't catch anything, so I'm glad that it's, you know, working out just fine. In fact, I'm really happy with the way how this build looks. The RGB lighting looks great. I love the RGB Dominator Platinum memory and the NZXT cooler, but at the same time, the motherboard lighting, the GPU lighting, all just looks so uniform. Now, I certainly want to improve a few things in the future, and one of them is uh, cable management because I feel like I could do a little bit of a better job uh, inside. And secondly, I do want to replace those two NZXT fans with some Nocto fans because they are a bit louder than I thought they would. So um, yeah, that aside from that, it's, uh, it's a pretty good looking system. I love it. And now on to performance, and man, this thing, flies. So I'm going to compare this system to my current workstation PC, which features an 8700K overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz and an RTX 2080 Ti. Let's get started. Now running some synthetic benchmarks, I was completely in shock to see the performance improvement over my 8700K overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz. As you can see with Cinebench R20, R15, and even Blender, this thing just flies. Now I did take our standard 10 minute 4K project and rendered them in Resolve Studio on both these machines. But interestingly enough, I didn't notice a difference between them because as we all know, Resolve loves GPUs and it just, the more GPUs you throw at it, the faster it renders it out. Although we are planning on investigating that a little bit later on. I'm really looking for a video editing machine as well as a little bit of gaming on the side. So both these systems are great, but I'm really happy to see that thing run just as fast as this guy. So, you know, 
That's awesome. Now I was really interested to test thermals on my ITX rig. And so I took our standard blender test and ran it on loop. And the 3950X only averaged around 63C with the Kraken X62 AI cooler. But my 8700K overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz averaged or maxed out at 73C. So it ran hotter compared to my 3950X. That's just, um, that's crazy guys, that really is. Finally, I ran some gaming benchmarks on both these systems at 4K as that is my desired resolution when it comes to gaming since I have a 4K monitor. And both these systems ran similarly, which makes sense because they both rock RTX 2080 Ti's. And when you're gaming at 4K, it's more taxing on the GPU than the CPU. So if you're looking for a gaming system and an ITX form factor, you don't have to go for a 3950X. You're actually better off with a lower core count processor and a faster GPU. So that's my new workstation PC. And I hope you guys enjoyed this one. In fact, if you have any cable management tips, definitely let me know in the comments down below because this is my first ITX rig and I would love to get feedback in terms of improvements for this PC. I'm Ebor with Hyrule Canucks. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out some relevant content over here. Subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on a video. I'm signing off and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.